the emulation handheld battle continues to wage on. So we've taken a look at a lot of these things. The BitBoy version 3, the revision, the BitBoy Pocket Go. Seems like every two weeks, BitBoy's coming out with a new revision. Nobody can keep up. And then my favorite so far out of the handhelds that are in this price range, like this goes for about 30 to 35 bucks. The Pocket Go is $40. And then this little fella goes for somewhere around $50 to $55. So I, I would say they're all in a very similar price range. But so far, the LDK game has been my favorite. There are no perfect devices here. This does still have some issues. The viewing angle, for one, you know, going left and right is fine. But as soon as you start to drop it low, you start to get a little dimming action on that screen. Whereas on the BitBoys, you, you don't. But you have that screen tearing problem on the BitBoy line where you don't have that on this. So I really dug this because the games played quite a bit better for me. And it's just, I liked it. You know, the L and R buttons kind of, kind of awkward with them being up top. They are a little stiff, but Hey, overall, I did prefer this over those, but we finally do get to take a look at LDK game. What? It's the same thing. We get to take a look at the revision of this little guy with whatever you want to call this, the, the LDK game landscape, the horizontal, the, the LDK game pocket go. I, I don't know. I don't know what people are calling this thing. I've seen it called so many different things, but today we're getting to take a look at this and it does have some cool revisions compared to the original LDK game, uh, but they do share the same specs as far as the hardware goes, but there are some additions to it. Same CPU, pretty much the same screen, all that good stuff, but some quality of life changes here. So we're gonna take a look at that give you guys my thoughts and feelings on this device because this one is going for a little bit more than this. Uh, you know, I think I've seen these for between 50 to $55. This I'm seeing between 60 to $70. I'm sure the price will kind of settle down at that $60 price point. Uh, you can find them now on, on certain websites. I'm not affiliated with a single one of them, but I know on Retro Mimi, I believe it is the one that I ordered the Pocket Go from. Uh, these are going for like 62. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. But let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. So this one, the, the landscape was provided to me by a viewer of the channel. Uh, his name is Handheld Obsession on Instagram. So I'm really appreciative that he sent this over. He saw my, my review of this and was like, hey, if you want to check this out, I got you covered. Really awesome dude. He's actually gonna be giving away a few of these and, and maybe some other stuff. I've checked out his Instagram, Handheld Obsession. I'll put a link in the description. He has quite a few followers. He's doing a lot of cool stuff over there. So definitely check him out. Take a look at what he's doing. Like I said, he's giving away some handhelds as well. So that's pretty cool. But thanks man for sending this on over so I can check it out finally. But here's the packaging, nothing special. Uh, tells you what it comes with. We don't need to dwell on that crap. Let's just let's 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 get into this thing so here is the handheld but let's see what extra fixings are in here we do get the micro usb charging cable and interestingly enough we do get an av a composite cable pretty cool i mean i don't know who would want to use it but hey we get one so here is the ldk game landscape the one cool thing I did ask handheld obsession because he sent this to me. I noticed there was a, a glass screen protector on here. He said, that's the way they're shipping them. They come with glass screen protectors because the screen is plastic, just like the other LDK game. That's where BitBoy does get a one up is they're using glass. Come on guys for a cheaper device. They're using glass. Let's get some glass on these things, but Hey, having that tempered, uh, Glass screen protector is cool with this, whereas this one I had to buy one that's not exactly made to fit but works. So that's 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 a nice bonus. Can't can uh, argue anybody on that one. Nice bonus for sure. So you're immediately gonna notice I just put a smudge on the screen here, but that's that's all right. Let's let's wipey wipey off. Um, but you're gonna notice, obviously, the orientation is a little different. 
we do get this like old school PSP style analog stick now, which can be very useful for some games. The D-pad, the buttons, the start and select, and the L and R all feel identical to what we had going on over here. It's the same device essentially, other than these new improvements with an analog. And we now do get dual speakers. So we got some, uh, some mini stereo sound here. Whereas the original just had that one single speaker there. So that is definitely nice. And the other thing I noticed, I remember on that one, I complained that the volume, just like a lot of these devices going down was volume up and going up was volume down. It's, it's, it's the right way on this one. Going up is volume up and down is volume down. So that is a good thing. The power, uh, let's go ahead and turn that on. Slide it up. We're going to go ahead and jump into this. Take a look at some gameplay. Give you guys my thoughts on this little device here. Um, and the nice thing is L goes left. R goes right. It does feel a hell of a lot better in the hands than the original LDK game. To me, the few dollar difference. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's justified. I, I don't see an issue with that. Um, but it, it's like, what's next? You know, this just came out. Is there going to be an LDK game three coming out next week? Uh, you know, it's, it's just nonstop with these guys, man. But here we go. We do get all the include the normal included stuff. The King of Fighters. We got that rock bot over here. Uh, some kind of trans ball. So uh, the same compatibility as the previous one. But let's just go through some systems. Show you how everything runs. So Atari 2600. I kind of am selecting a handful of... Uh, there we go. Games here that I haven't showcased in the past. Just to kind of mix things up. Because like I said, this is exactly the same unit as the other LDK game. It's just those few little quality of life improvements that may or may not be worth it to you. For me, I mean, I'm not waiting till the end of the video to say it, but yeah, to me, it, it is worth it. I, I do think uh, the orientation, the analog, even though I don't really care for this analog too much, uh, it, it's still, it, it's a lot nicer and having the analog is pretty cool. I mean, does come in handy. So let's get out of Donkey Kong on 2600. Don't want to dwell too long on each system, but I do want to test out everything that I have on here uh, so far. So here's uh, Raiden on the Atari Lynx. You got to swap the orientation here. If you ever had an Atari Lynx, uh, there was a lot of games that did this, which is pretty cool. But as you see, we're, we're not, you know, even in this, this is, this is flowing good. Sounding good. Kind of kind of hard for me to control at an angle here. But we ain't trying to speed run shit here. We're just trying to showcase that these games work. And we're not getting no crazy screen tearing. But like with this, if you could see, I'm turning it that way. Just the slightest turn and the screen starts to dim. I'm trying not to get the glare in there. Um, where it's going the other way, it's, it's not too bad. But... If you're holding it this way, let's get out of there. We just we just messed up completely on that game. But if you, you go left or right a little bit, it doesn't dim, but soon you could see that right on the camera. I'm looking at my viewfinder. Soon as you just a little bit, you just start to really get that that uh that dimming action, whatever. I don't know. I'm sure there's a scientific term for it. I don't flip and know what it is. But it does do that. The viewing angle kind of sucks. The second, like, you've got to have this kind of straight on, maybe at, like, a five-degree um, angle is fine. But as soon as you start hitting past that, it's it's not viewable. That's one of the biggest cons of this thing, in my opinion. Uh, let's check out some, some Gazane Boy here. Ghosts and Goblins. And each of these emulators does have a lot of uh, visual options. You know, the size, uh, scan lines, some filters, you know, uh, there's a lot of options like that. And the speaker, the dual speakers, 
it might be a little difficult for my microphone to pick this up because the way it's set for my voice, not set for gameplay action. Um, but with the speakers on the back, it still booms. I mean, they couldn't have put them on the front. There's just really no way. Um, it still comes through very loud on the back. I think that's, that's very nice the way this sounds anyway. Not having too many issues with that. But as you see here, the game's running smooth. To me, it sounds good. Uh, not every emulator is going to be perfect. Uh, not for every game. I'll try to show some examples of that in a moment. But yeah, this is this is playing very well. I'm very happy with this. I mean, pretty much all your most of your portables are going to work just fine. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Atari Lynx, Game Gear, uh, stuff like that's going to be just fine. Uh, Game Boy Advance, on the other hand, that's that's going to be kind of a nope, depending on what it is. Like Doom, for example. Let's let's load that up. Doom does not function very well on this device. Like it looks like it's functioning fine, but those sounds are way off. It's it's definitely slightly slower than than what it should be. Struggling a little bit, but the 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 sound If you can hear that, I'm sure you can hear that. That ain't right, my friends. So Game Boy, um, look at that. When you're in the menu or in the map, the music's fine. Get back in the game, and that's struggling, struggling. Pretty interesting that it does that. So Game Boy Advance is just very hit and miss. Ain't nobody got time to test every single game out there for the Game Boy Advance to tell you what works and what doesn't work. So it's going to be at your own risk. I can tell you F-Zero uh, Maximum Velocity has played very well for me uh, when I tested it. Didn't really notice any big issues with it. But like I said, Game Boy Advance, don't buy these little handhelds if Game Boy Advance is something that you just have to have everything of. Because there's there's just no way to guarantee that everything's going to work. Like, you know, NES or Game Boy, Game Boy Color, that kind of stuff is going to be just fine. And as you see, this game is running very well. So to me, one of the one of the biggest things is is people are going to want a device like this for specific systems. And you're going to be disappointed if there's games that you want to play that just don't function. So, like I said, if, if you're looking for something like this for Game Boy Advance, I, I would pass. I mean, just being honest, I wouldn't bother with this or any of these other devices because you're not going to have everything that you, you, you could dream of. Let's go to uh, Sega Genesis, Rocket Knight Adventures. Like I said, I'm trying to show some games that I haven't haven't bothered with in the past here. Just kind of mix it up a little bit. The Sega Genesis is uh, is is pretty on point. I would say out of the 16-bit stuff on here, uh, Sega Genesis performs beautifully well. Oops. I guess that's the one thing too is um with these buttons I you know my thumb's not a big fat ass thumb but you know you could easily hit the the select and start 
uh, if you're you're hitting this B button, um, resting your thumb over it. That's that's one thing. Got to point that out. That I just did it, you know. So it's 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 easily done. It's kind of like I wish. I mean, where else could they put the select and start? I mean, it's it's fine. I guess you just gotta kind of get used to it. Because I can feel it on the, the, the ass of my thumb. I don't know what you call that, but the right there. The ass of my thumb. When I'm hitting the, the Y or the, the B button, I, I could definitely feel the select and start button. Like if I'm raising it up and just hitting it with the tip, just the tip of my thumb, it's, it's fine. I'm not feeling it, but yeah. Just trying to just trying to point the stuff out that I'm noticing here, but there you go. Rocket Knight Adventures playing playing awesomely well. Let's hear that uh, Sega logo. Beautiful. Sonic Two and Knuckles. Knuckles in Sonic Two. Give you a little taste. You don't, you don't see that nasty ass screen tearing here. And the sound is pretty much on point. I'm using a very small memory card, so I don't have a, a huge selection on here at the moment, but I've cycled through a few games just testing this out to, you know, formulate as best of an opinion as I can. And Sega Genesis has been one where everything I've thrown at it has been great. I cannot complain. Uh, NES. NES is, is perfect. Haven't had any issues with NES. This is that game, uh, Vice Project Doom. Always, always highly recommending this. This is like one of those legit hidden gems. I never heard about this game. And so uh, I played it on one of those cheap Chinese multi-carts. It, does, it starts out like this pretty cool game. You know, you're shooting up these cars. As soon as you pass this, it's only like a couple minutes stage. You're in like a side-scrolling Ninja Gaiden type uh, action game going on. Like, there's there's a lot of variety in this game. Highly recommend it. I, I own the original cart of this. It was a game I, I just had to have for my NES. Love this. Love this game. Check that out. It's a very challenging, awesome ass game, man. Oh, I'm already dying, but that's okay. You guys get the point. Awesome game. Check this out. Let's get out of that. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket. Match of the Millennium. Plays very well. You would hope, you know, with this analog, uh, it, it would function well with this and it's okay, but it just doesn't feel right. This this is kind of like you'll probably be better playing Neo Geo Pocket Color or Pocket using the D-pad. Like this works, but it just doesn't doesn't feel the same as playing a uh, with an actual Neo Geo Pocket control. But still awesome. Plays very well. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color didn't play very well on the uh, the Bit Boys for me for some reason. Oh, you son of a bitch. Awesome game. Let's get out of that. Oh, Pokemon Mini. Pokemon Mini plays on here. What do we got? That's interesting. This thing is acting nuts on me, man. It's almost like the uh like the analog got stuck. Well, you guys you guys got to see that. Let's let's wow and it it just powered off without me uh hitting okay. Well I'm glad you guys saw that. I don't know what the hell was going on with this, but 
let's go ahead and 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 try that again. Maybe just maybe Pokemon Mini is cursed. But I was playing it just fine earlier. I just wanted to quickly show that it does run. Should we try it again? Okay, cool. I don't know. That was some kind of weird glitch, man. Maybe I was holding something when I exited the game. I don't know. But hey, you guys saw it. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll play it back and find out. I don't know how to play this game. I just know I, I tried playing this one. And, and as soon as it said, ready, go, or whatever. Set, go. Like, I just, I lost immediately. Oh. I gotta, like, I lost. Oh, oh whatever. Pokemon minigames are stupid, but uh, you could play them. That's, that's, that's a good thing. You can play them. Uh, PlayStation kind of hit and miss the, the same thing as the LDK game. I mean, we showcased that last time. Super Nintendo. I, I got three games on here right now. Let's let, let me just start Chrono Trigger so you can hear this. Um, the game plays. But the sound is fud up. The, even when you get into the game, um, it, it's it's kind of nasty, man. It's like off and on, the sound is really bad. Uh, so I, I just wanted to point that out. You know, a game that you wouldn't think would be, and even now the the sound is cutting in and out. It's kind of hard to tell, but like with the waves and stuff, there was kind of a cut in and out. But I don't, I don't want to dwell on that game too long because it takes a while to get into it. But I just want to point that out. You're going to have some sound issues with Super Nintendo. Contra 3? Um, it seemed like it started to play fine the first time I played it. Uh, but as you progress a little bit, there is some extreme slowdown and just nastiness that's not in the original game. And the sound is kind of... The sound is chopping. It's got that chop suey action going on. Really, really bad. I mean, maybe with the firmware updates, uh, you know, some emulator settings, this could be tweaked, but just being upfront, Super Nintendo is really gonna be hit and miss. Some of the classics that you would like are gonna be just fine. The Super Mario games haven't had any issues with. Uh, even Hagane here, awesome, awesome game. Haven't had any issues with Hagane that I've noticed. I've played through the first few stages on this game and didn't have any issues. The sound was good. Everything's running smooth. So it's just, it's another one of those things like Game Boy Advance. It's just really going to be hit and miss. And that's, that kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Especially for the price. Kind of sucks, but that's what so I'm saying. There's no perfect solution out there, but for what I want, um, and, and just kind of, you know, people keep getting mad when I include the, the GPI case, uh, the GPI, so sorry, the GPI case from Retro Flag. Um, when I include that in my assessment of like, hey, you know, I prefer this. Well, I still prefer the GPI case, the GPI case, the GPI case. I still prefer that over any of these solutions. But if I were to exclude that, then yes, this is the king of the cheaper little handhelds. Uh, oh, flipping around, flipping around. This is the king for me. I do like it quite a bit, um, but none of these solutions are going to be perfect for all your needs. You know, everybody's saying get a PSP. No crap, dude. We could we could play on the PSP. We could emulate a ton of stuff. The 2DS. You know, there's tons of options out there, uh, but some people just like these things. I think they're pretty neat. Um, and so far, this is this is my favorite one. Not without its flaws, but hey, it is what it is. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me with this extended ass video talking about another handheld. When the version three comes out, the one that's like gonna be shaped like a triangle, maybe who the frick knows? I'll be checking it out, man. We got to keep up on these LDK games and these Bit Boys and Bit Girls, whatever else is out there. So do appreciate it.
With that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out, bye bye, and boom. Thumbs up. Look at that thumb butt. Uh. Bye.